assalamu alaikum friends uh, in today's video we shall see the relevance meaning and the concept behind the cross company code cross cc number which is uh, a data field in the accounting entry interface of fp50 and other accounting entry interfaces so if we call the uh, built-in help that is f1 it says that this is the number of a cross company code posting transactions and it says that if a document is posted that is affecting multiple company codes then there is a common number which identifies all such documents and this common document number is actually the cross company code number right and it is it can be created automatically it can be created manually uh, and if it is created automatically then the nomenclature of uh, the the number generated is the original document number in which uh, company code the original document is being posted right uh, we shall see uh, in, in in the following uh, further discussion how this it happens and the company code uh, followed by the company code and followed by the fiscal year so this is how this common number uh, is actually generated automatically now let's see what is a cross company code document for which such a number is required which can be generated either automatically or which can be actually used uh, which can be manually manually entered as well so let's uh, so this is a sap blog this is an sap blog blogs.sap.com i will post this link in uh, the comments of this video as well so it actually tells us all the things about the intercompany transactions so for the end user, the basic thing to understand is that it is possible uh, if we have uh, uh, the configuration, necessary configuration, that we post a document which is simultaneously posted in two different company codes if this is an intercompany transaction. So it usually happens within a group of companies if there are sister concerns, associated companies, subsidiary and parent companies, and they are transacting uh, with among us between them. So it is not necessary to enter the document in both of them. So if we have necessary configuration, then what we can do is we enter the document in one company code. And because there is a necessary configuration there, so the document in another company code is automatically posted. So it is something like this one. So this is the, this is the configuration, right? That we, we uh, disclose that which two actually our company codes are being uh, configured for, for combined posting. So in company code one, the document will be posted over here. You can see company code 1009, but it will simultaneously be posted in company code 1011 as well. So what happened with 1011? So in the receivable side, uh, if it is a debit side, then the posting key will be 40 and the account will be this one. And on the credit side, the posting key will be 50 and account will be this one. So this is known actually as, as a clearing account, right? And if it is posted in company code 1011, then it will be cleared again uh, uh, in, in another company code, which is company code 1009. So say this is the setting for if the document is posted in the parent company. And this is the setting for if the document is originally posted in the subsidiary company. So although the document will be posted in both, but we have to enter the document in only one of the company codes, right? Uh, if we want this to happen. So we have to define these two settings. And then what happens is that uh, when the document is actually posted, uh, so there are uh, plenty of uh, configuration settings, right? So you can see over here that the company code is 1009. But while posting, we are actually also referring company code 1011. So it is posted in 1009, uh, but the company code mentioned in the line item is 1011. It means the system will take this setting, right? This setting, right? So what the system will do in company code 1011, right? If it has to be debited, this account will be debited. If, if an account to be credited, then this account will be credited, right? Okay, so let's... Uh, uh, see it in uh, in more depth now in this particular transaction so this transition is being posted in company code 1009 and this is being posted in vendor uh, and this is the vendor of the company code 1009 and the vendor uh, is, since this is a vendor invoice so the vendor is being credited right now the vendor is being credited in company code 1009 
but the rent expense is being debited in company code 1011 so remember this GL account number is from company code 1011 is from this company code not this header company code right so this means that this document we define one line item for company code 1009 and we define another line item for company code 1011 now there has to be a complete entry so if the system is getting credit from here in this company code what will be debit so the system will now retrieve debit right so the system will retrieve debit from here right so the system will retrieve debit that if the post is in 1009 then the debit posting key is actually has to be this one right so system will retrieve actually uh, this is the debit posting key so the system will actually debit this account the clearing account and for company code in which the document is posted system will actually use uh, the clearing account of that company code so let's see now the this particular document how it is posted right so this is the cross company code document number which can which can then be used as as an umbrella document and from which we can actually call both of these documents and then we can see this document so these this is the entry actually right so it's, the document was actually posted in company code 1009 right and we actually credited the vendor so vendor is credited and the debit is goes to account number 200195 uh, posting key 40 so this you can see is actually this one right this is actually debited 200195 and on the other hand in the in the company code 1011 you can see that office rent which was originally posted in the document is being debited and the clearing account which was referred to in the configuration is being uh, credited right so this is how the cross company code inter inter company code transaction takes place uh, again we need to have necessary configuration for this and uh, the point was that uh, the document number is actually cross company code document number which can be assigned uh, manually or which can be generated automatically as well so i hope uh, you would have got some idea got some idea thank you